Welcome to Woven Wings Live, where we bring you wisdom and tools for vibrant living. Uh, I'm Rahul Didwanya, and joined as always by my co-host, Gabe Crane. Uh, And if you enjoy listening to us, please consider sharing with a friend or leaving us a review uh, wherever you listen to podcasts and join our newsletter. Uh, The link is in our show description and we'd love it if you followed uh, followed along on on the journey here. Um, So today's episode is facing our impulse to control, resonance in practice. And uh, this is our first attempt uh, at doing a mini series of sorts uh, for so so for anyone who uh, hasn't heard our previous episode uh, playing with resonance getting a feel for an emerging methodology uh, we encourage you to start there uh, that episode will be linked in our show description as well um, it's more of a theoretical episode introducing this concept of resonance Uh, and today we're going to be getting a little bit more into practice and into application uh, of this concept uh, of resonance around this specific theme of control and what it means or what it looks like for us to have an impulse to control and uh, before getting into that though you know want to Welcome you here, Gabe, to the virtual studio, and also welcome you back stateside after you know being in India for a couple of months. Uh, how are you doing? How was the trip back? How are you feeling? I uh, would love to just check in and uh, welcome you back. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here with you again. And it's been a whirlwind, you know, back in uh, back in our home in Maui after a couple months with a lot of rich family time in Bangalore, India, and. Yeah, as we were just talking about right before the show, you know, I think it's just uh, so many different things when you're transitioning from one environment and place on this planet into another. And sometimes what sticks out is like the differences, like there's just so many people in India, so much density in Bangalore, so many people on the same block. And then here we're in our like kind of country home on the side of Haleakala in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, surrounded by (laughs) thousands of miles of water. (laughs) <laughs> and so on that one hand, I think there's difference. And then what's amazing is that it's like the same planet. Uh, it's the same. Mm. I'm the same person, same human process going on here, somehow running between those places. And, you know, I think this is just kind of a common trope, but it struck me how our world is just smaller than ever. And that is a that is one kind of wisdom teaching or spiritual principle that's out there of wherever you are, you're just right here. There's really just one place and it's it's the present. And I, I think that'll have some relevance to our theme today of exploring control. So that, that's that's a little bit about where I'm at at the moment. And it's really good to be here with you. Thank you for sharing all of that, Gabe. And uh, really, really looking forward to diving into some of this stuff today. Again, I think today is a very unique episode. It's, you know, we're taking a very different approach. We're going to be diving into some different things. And would love to hear you speak to that a little bit. You know, what is this topic, the impulse to control? What does that mean to you? And, and you know, how are you thinking about our conversation today? Well, you mentioned that last time we had a little bit more of a theoretical episode, you know, exploring this idea of resonance that I'm developing in my work and its connection to other systems that are the background and training that I have. And then today is more about practical application, about exploring and experiencing some of those concepts that we laid out last time, but in more of a lived manner. On that, I, I want to start by just acknowledging and honoring you because I think you, you're you the guinea pig, as you said, <laughs> those are the words you use going in, um, which is we're not doing some sort of like experiment here, like uh, no, no mad scientist, but but I do think there's been this dynamic intention throughout this whole project for folks who have followed us around exploring these different wisdom traditions or insights from science uh, and getting more of a introduction to them or a theoretical understanding. And then we always look at, we try to work that into our episodes about how do we apply it, right? It's wisdom and tools for vibrant living. How do we, what, what does this matter for our life? How do we live it out? But I think we're always there's only so much time in an episode, right? And when when you're exploring a topic, you can you got to introduce it. You have to make sense of where you're at, and there's not always tons of time to really get into the actual practice of it. And I think also practice is scary. Theory yeah. is more like safe because you're just talking about an idea, and then in practice, 
we have to actually be confronted by that idea in our lives and we have to open ourselves up more. There's more vulnerability and transparency involved in that. I think it's uh, it's courageous that you're feeling like you want to like take a dive of like looking at how these tools, how this approach of resonance applies into your own life. And specifically because the way our conversations unfolded in, in our preparation for this is that the emerging idea is really about this idea of control and the the impulse we have, which I think you're not alone at all in this, I'm actually right there alongside you to control our experience, to clamp down into something that is concrete and graspable rather than open up to and be present to allowing what's emergent, what wants to arise, being in a process of noticing curiosity and uncertainty that comes with that because it's not clear where it's going. You know, and just like for a little transparency for our listeners, right? We usually have, I've got like our notes that we have for our document, which I always have up <laughs> with screen on my computer, right? Usually we have like a whole set of themes and topics. And I know you're in particular very good at like tracking this. Today, we have a lot less notes. We have a few concepts and words from what we talked about beforehand, but there's a lot less there. And that's scary to face like the blank page and be like, okay, what are we going to spend our time here on? It doesn't seem like the richness of what's actually present, probably what most wants to come forward or would be most valuable and helpful for yourself individually and for people listening at home comes out of that blank page. And so how do we create the space, meaning setting aside our controlling impulses to actually allow that to happen? And I think that's really the main focus of, of our episode today is kind of really understanding that distinction between those different approaches and ways of being and acting, and then seeing if we can kind of understand that a little bit more, get a little more comfortable in that and um, and see what it opens up for, for you and for me and for both of us together and for everyone listening at home. Especially excited to get into this today for multiple reasons. I mean, one is just for us as a project. I think you've sort of set the stage for this. It's it's a new chapter, right? To be bringing in a little bit more of the experiential component of the ideas that we talk about. Uh, and then second, just selfishly, right? I think I've really been coming up against this edge recently in a lot of different aspects of my life. And I think, you know, I think there's a part of me that that views this from the lens of paradox, right? Which is like, hey, there's value to the control impulse and there's also value in letting go. And, and I, I'm sure that's true, like, you know, different situations and it's kind of like a both and, right? But I think what I've observed within myself historically, you know, I was actually very more, much more inclined towards like being unstructured, you know, and to use uh, like Myers-Briggs parlance for those that are familiar, right? I was a strong P, right? Perceiving, unstructured, uh, kind of willing and thriving in a place where there's more ambiguity. And that's kind of where I like to thrive, you know, that showed up in a lot of different contexts, something as small as, hey, if I'm giving a presentation, it's like, I wouldn't take notes or I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have like an outline. It's like, oh, I'm just going to go and, and just flow with it, you know, all the way up to the way I traveled, you know, or the way I even showed up to a conversation. I was like, oh, I'm going to trust that I'll, I'll know what to say. And for whatever reason, you know, that this could be something we end up exploring or not over time. And over the last few years in particular, very much moved in the other direction. Jay and coming back to Myers Briggs, like judging, right? Which that, I don't love that term, but more generally structured, categorical, you know, wanting to have a plan, wanting to control, uh, wanting to kind of boot it to the notes, right? It's like having a structure, having a set of questions that I've already thought about in advance, at least in part. Uh, and I think already like feeling actually, what I'm happy to notice is like, I'm not like nervous today, you know, about going in without it. I'm like more excited to reconnect or, or rather bring out the side of me that that is more flowing and more unstructured and more just wanting to play with what's what's going to emerge in the moment. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that piece and uh, just say that I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. 
Yeah, beautiful. I mean, I think it's it's very true what you said about the paradox and the balance. We need structures, we need tools, and we have a natural impulse to order and direct our environments, which includes our inner state. And so I think at the outset, it's important to name that we're not just talking about being in a completely unstructured way of being all the time, or that that is somehow, if you just take away all the rules and go towards that extreme, then you'll end up with something valuable. I mean, you, you may, that, that also has its beauty, but there is this, this dynamic. But what I'd be curious just to start out with understanding is that what do you think has driven that change? Do you have any idea, like what what is driving underneath that movement into more of that controlling feeling, that more judging and managing, you know, experience from where you maybe were more originally? You know, I was reflecting on this question and I've been thinking about it a lot. And I'll say that what I'm about to present are just theories. I, I don't know yet, or hypotheses, I guess is maybe the better word. And there are a couple of them, you know, and I think they're, it feels like they're externally driven. One is uh, just this idea of having like grown into new stages of life where there's a higher degree of responsibility. I think that has led to this feeling that, hey, like I need to have structure in order to drive results, right? And, and that's a very high abstract idea. And I'll just try to bring it down to earth a little bit. So one context was, you know, I guess now it's been almost eight years, seven and a half years ago, alluded to having started a business, right? And when we started a business, myself and, and my co-founder, Varun, it, it came with this feeling of responsibility, right? And this feeling of we're building something, we're going to have people working for us, we're going to have clients that we have you know, uh, an obligation to or a responsibility towards as well. And that comes with this idea of, okay, really need to make sure that we're doing the right thing, that we're doing all of the things, that our quality is high, that our attention to you know, our, our people's experience, the people who worked with us, that our attention to that was very nuanced, very detailed, very uh, comprehensive, very thorough. And I think all of that lended to bringing out or elevating the side of myself that was oriented towards completeness, right? And having checklists, having you know, documenting everything, building out like, again, thoroughness, right? And so that's one arena. Another arena is, and so that's just this general idea of like work and, and growing responsibility on the work side. Another arena has been on the personal side, moving from sort of the more freewheeling, willy-nilly, early 20s, like nothing matters, can kind of just flow, go have a good time, make sure you, you know, do enough at, in your life to, to cater to all your basic needs, but just kind of flow with things to this idea of, okay, now like I'm married and we're building a life and we want to be intentional about it. We want to consider practical things about what it looks like to build the life that we want, you know, and having, actually having a vision of a life to be working towards or a lifestyle or a, uh, you know, all, and just even, so, so that, that's, I think, uh, another area, I think that again, environmentally or life stage wise has brought a little bit of that into the fold. And I think looking ahead to where you're at, you know, whenever Kirti and I get to that stage, like being a parent, you know, and I see, I'm like, I imagine that's going to elevate some of these things even further, right? Where it's like, oh, you have a certain set of responsibilities. So I think there's this theme of responsibility, you know, is, is I guess what I'm trying to get at. And then the second hypothesis has to do with this transition period I had between high school and college that I've talked to you about, Gabe. Now it's been a couple of years since we've talked about this, right? But it was like going from this environment in high school where without having any sort of structure, without when you know, I was able to thrive in terms of like outcomes, you know, and then going into a context where in college where there wasn't structure, right? And and then coming in with a set of habits that was also not oriented around that. And then in my perception of it, again, great, great experience, you know, awesome four years of my life. But in terms of like the outcomes that I wanted, I fell short, you know, and I felt like I paid the price for 
not having a more structured, controlling, categorical attitude. And while I don't wholly believe that, I think there's a part of that that also influenced this transition towards uh, you know, wanting to have a little bit more deliberate structure, right, and control over the way that I operated. I'll just pause there. I know I threw a lot out there <laughs> and curious what you think about all that. Yeah, well, I, first thing I think is that lots of people can relate to it. I can relate to that. I'm guessing if you're listening to this, you can relate to what Rahul is describing because these are human experiences. These are natural things that happen to us as we grow, as we change. You talked a lot about getting older and the responsibility that comes with that. These are not bad things. These are just natural things. And I think that's the first thing to acknowledge. And that actually, you know, this would be a good like caveat to start out a conversation is like a high degree of control is actually a mark of kind of spiritual development or personal development. I think about like in Ren Shui, uh, one of the main influences, you know, that I work within. Part of the mark of making progress in that system is that you're able to continue to return to a good state, quote unquote, good state, being calm, relaxed, natural, uplifting, positive in any situation. So that, and that involves control. Oh, I'm in a crowded subway and I'm starting to feel claustrophobic and I missed my train. Opportunity to freak out, to justify an emotional response, to begin to run, panic. There's a degree of control. There's an execution of control to say, I'm going to take a breath here and open up to what's going on and notice and move myself, you know, deliberately through the situation in an effective mm. way. Right. Like, so that's actually a positive expression of control. And there are many instances actually scattered throughout all elements of our life, all elements of our day that involve control. So we actually need control. I love your, your narrative. It's so rich of like, you know, being like that willy nilly, like younger stage of like, <laughs> I have no responsibilities. Like it's, it's also very, very American, you know, like I just came yeah. from ideas, like people are like not like that in the early 20s, like some of them. But, um, but I, I personally was like that probably <laughs> into my early 30s, you know, so, um, so I, I think that uh, you have that, that there's an image in the I Ching of like when grass sprouts up and it covers the earth you know, and it's just like wild and it just goes where it likes. And it's beautiful if you look at like a field in the spring, but like human life and life in general is not just about that being a wild field. Like we do stuff, you know, then we want to cultivate that field. We want to build a house in a certain section of it. We have to think all that through. And so control is very important, but at the same time, what I think the reason why this topic is alive for you is that control has become problematic in its in its own rights as well. And so, yeah. you know, that, that speaks, I think, to this concept, this, or this practice of balance, balancing and moving away from extremes, which is really core to what we're talking about here. But maybe let's go over to that side and maybe you could describe that now of like, where does control go awry for you? What is going on when it's not in balance and not feeling good and working well for you? Plenty to speak to that. And I'll just add a few more pieces of context, right? Where I was reflecting a little bit on where this is present for me today. And it's not all that different from what I was just saying, but just to update it, right? I think, you know, I was thinking across different aspects of my life right now. And Kirti and I just moved. And so there's this been, been this piece around like, oh, we got to set up our house. You know, we got to get it to this certain place. I started a new job at the beginning of the year, right? And I've been feeling this uh, impatience to become more effective, to become more authoritative, to become more confident, uh, to also 
to drive forward a lot of pieces of work that have been identified within the role. You know, like, oh, I need to execute on XYZ. Like the faster I get there, the faster we have it. You know, and there's that intensity or desire to to move quickly. There are just all these habits and hobbies and interests that I'm like wanting to move forward all at the same time. Uh, you know, and it's like, it's like, oh, last year I was focusing on becoming a better swimmer and I and I got, you know, and I did, but I'm like, oh, I want to go even further, you know? And it's like, there's this hunger, right? Which I think can be a positive force, this curiosity, this drive, this, this just excitement, right? To engage on all these things and to learn and to grow. But where it's gone awry, right? Is it's presented itself now as pressure, right? I'm like, oh, I want to optimize. I want to be doing everything. I want to be executing all the time. That hunger has presented itself as insatiable, right? Which is like, it's, it's dissatisfaction. I felt myself being taken out of the present, like regularly, you know, even though I came into the year with this idea of like my number one goal this year is to continue to practice like presence, to feel that whatever I'm doing or whatever, wherever I'm at, whatever I'm thinking, whatever I'm experiencing in any given moment, there's nothing I'd rather be doing, you know, and I've had moments of being able to positively exercise control, like you were describing, right. And to bring myself back into that. But I've noticed that recently it, it hasn't been that I haven't been doing that or I've been able to do that as easily. Right. So I felt myself um, feeling pressure, uh, feeling stress. You know, we talked in our last episode about the healthy aspects of resonance, you know, of operating from a place of resonance. And I've felt the unhealthy aspects, I think, of, of feeling that pressure. Um, it's, I, you know, I mentioned it's been taking me out of the present. And, and I think the second order effects of all of that, right, is feeling more inclined to distraction because that's a form of escape from that stress and that pressure. Uh, feeling actually reduced effectiveness, right, which is the irony of, of of that pressure of being in that place where I'm like oh, right. I'm actually not able to be you know move as as efficiently or as quickly on all these things feeling probably the most damning effect of this for me is like feeling less connected because in any given moment I'm thinking about all of these things I'm feeling the weight of wanting to control wanting to this and that and then you know I'm like not tuned in when I, if I think about like what you know what my superpower is or what I think my superpower is it's being able to get to that place where I'm like here you know I'm looking at you I'm feeling that resonance you know with with my environment with the people that I'm around and I've felt very kind of distant from from that quality right and then tying it all the way back to the work context which is probably the biggest piece of all the ones that I just mentioned the probably the most important input to being effective as a coach as a facilitator as a trainer is that you know it's it's being present it's being resonant it's being in tune with whatever is happening in the space and so that irony is not lost on me right where i'm like this control impulse while there are benefits probably to being methodical about the things that I need to do and to getting myself into the mindset where I'm moving forward on it and being structured about my learning and, you know, not getting too unfocused. It's definitely felt like it's overextended, right? To a place where now it's been counterproductive as well, right? And taken me out of the place where I can actually engage in these processes in a joyful, positive curiosity driven growth driven place uh, that's also more effective you know in that way there's so much you said there the irony that you pointed out I think really particularly brought a smile to my face <laughs> you know of just like yeah that's how it goes right <laughs> we set out we are like okay I'm gonna do all these things I packed my lunch I set up like the 12 step plan and I know where I'm going and then somehow it I didn't get there somehow I I ended up wait I thought the problem in college was my unstructured attitude right it's like but wait was it was that really the problem you know and I, I think that this is something that I'm sure other people can relate to listening to I can relate to this the secrets of life are are kind of hiding underneath our nose you know it's it's not where we think it is and and one of the main things i hear in your description is that 
external orientation that we often adopt of like, okay, I'm trying to solve for this thing and I have these responsibilities to people outside of myself and to this work, to this relationship. And so I become more and more externally oriented. I need to do this and that to have an impact on the environment. And I move further and further away from the actual lived experience of resonance of being present. And I start to justify that because I don't have time for that. I need to, and it's also confusing. Like, what the hell is resonance? It, what, what is that state? I, 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 I felt it <laughs> at one point, and it was nice, and it was really profound and great. But like now, I, I don't really know how to get there. There's not like a clear list that's like leading me towards that. Although that is something that's emerging here on this call. It's like I think there are some. That's the thing is there are some clear things that can lead us back to that state. And there are. Well, well and I, I also that, want to add to this. Sorry, just to pick on a thread you mentioned yeah. around the excuse, right? The, the like, yes. it, you know, I think the other question that emerges is like, okay, yes, I want to get there, but one, I don't have time for it, and two, like, how is it going to support me? in this process of the, you know, this mountain of stuff that I'm trying to get through, you know, and there's still that drive of like, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so we get into these constructs like that. And I think any working adult can relate to that and anyone trying to generate and develop something um, new or innovate something or produce something. Yeah. It's like all of that becomes so compelling that whole story. And what we forget is like, that's just totally a construct that we, we invented, yeah. you know? And like, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and yes, like there's that mountain of stuff. Yes. There's that sense of accomplishment we'll move towards, but ultimately what's actually happening is that we're in the present moment and we're in this state that's not resonant. <laughs> that's like essentially the only thing that's actually happening because, because all those projections and ideas about what we're working towards in the future, like those are a future idea. They're, they're just an idea of what, of where we're headed. And of course they have a reality and, and they're important, but ultimately we're just in the present feeling stressed out and feeling this sense of like inflated self-importance. Like I'm somehow justified in losing my state in order to pursue these things, because that's somehow my purpose. And that's yeah, what and we, I, we I want to say, like, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more, right? And I think this idea that I really wanted to pick out and emphasize, right, is once you're in any given construct, right, everything gets viewed from that lens, right? And so the, w- one of the ideas that's coming to me is, like, okay, when I'm in this construct, that trust construct, creating space for myself in order to tune into that resonance, right? To be more present in what's actually happening feels, starts to feel like a luxury, right? It starts right. to feel like a luxury that's not available. <laughs> it starts to feel like an indulgence, you know, like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, you know, it's like, it, it, should, what a I, like, privilege. Really, yeah, what a privilege, right? It's like, it's like, yeah, okay, in a period where I have like less stuff to do, like, yeah, sure, then it's nice, you know, I'd love to <laughs> go for a walk in the park or, you know, whatever, but it's like, Oh, right now, that's not possible. And there are probably actually times when that's really, you know, genuinely true. But most of the time, I think that's a projection of this construct. Um, exactly what you're saying. And I think to this point around relatability, I know that this is a concept that's like highly relatable, right? Both you and I, Gabe, we work with people that this is probably one of the top like three to five things you know, in in a coaching conversation that comes up like, yeah, okay, fine. These things are all great, but I don't have time, right? I don't have time. And and it's like, and everything gets viewed from that lens, right? And the, also the other thing that comes from that lens as it relates to this is like, I alluded to optimization mindset earlier, right? It's like, oh, how do I create more time? How do I do even more and less time? And Mm -hmm. again, the irony of that is, that just means you're going to try to squeeze more in. You're never actually going to create more space for yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah so I'll pause like, there. A few things. Like one is, um, yeah, that, that idea that it's a luxury. And I think that's, that's the first thing I say. No, it, it's, it's absolutely not a luxury. It's a necessity. It's the very first thing. And in certain ways, it's the only thing. So if you're doing that, you're, you're doing good. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing so good. 
whatever you think, whatever story that you've got going on about how important your life is or all the things you have to do, if you're not coming from a place of resonance and connection, then the value of whatever you're doing has plummeted. So, so that, that's the first thing. You mentioned also that there may be some cases where that's really not the case, where you, you can't uh, give yourself that space. And I would challenge that. And I would say, no, that's actually not true. Mm-hmm. There is never, ever, there's never a time ever when you don't have that capacity. And it's not important and imperative that you make that internal shift and adjustment. And that applies to any circumstance. You know, you, you mentioned like, I don't have time to go take that walk in the park. And that comes up for me working with people around like, yeah, like, how do I cultivate this? Okay, like, I need to spend time journaling, I need to spend time in mindfulness and meditation, I need to create space. So therefore, you know, I'm impinging on this, like structure of my life and my schedule. Yeah, like that, that's important too. But what we're talking about is an internal shift. You don't have to go to the park, you don't have to change anything about what you're experiencing. You only have to uh, shift your attitude. You only have to shift your orientation towards what is happening. And as soon as you do that, it opens up the possibility to relate to the phenomena of your experience in an actually productive way, in a different way, but in a way that's actually productive rather than what you've constructed thinking is productive, which is really just a waste of time. And To that point, you know, you mentioned about optimization. You know, I think that that's, we all, that's the way this world seems to work, unfortunately. And and that's this collective illusion that we play into of like, okay, I need to, it's that competition of the workplace, right? I need to optimize. I need to run faster. I need to get more and more structured, fit more and more things into my day. And there is, (laughs) I was uh, like, doing nothing uh, a few days ago, like, like scrolling my phone on Facebook and this quote from before sunrise came up with, with Ethan Hawke, Richard Linklater film. And he's talking about technology. And this is a movie made back in the nineties. He's like, everyone talks about how great this technology is. It's saving us so much time. It's great. And he's like, but what's the point of all that time? If you're just going to waste it, you know, and like, like that, that's that, that's all the quote was, and it's it just like, first of all, I love that movie and that series; it's awesome. But like, that is the great irony. Like, what do you want more time to do? So you can, like, I don't know, play video games or go for that walk. Then supposedly, like, the the reality is is that this is a state that accompanies us, and we're either doing it in the present moment or we're not. As I said earlier, and technology is great. And it has all this value, like having list and structure. It, again, it takes us places. It's important, but it will never substitute for this. And in certain ways, it presents us challenges because it present, gives us the illusion that we can substitute. That's like always like the challenge in like human development and evolution, you know, that like, okay, well, like I got to like figure out how to eat a little bit more easily. Okay, let's settle down and like plant some food. Let's let's develop a farm. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. Okay, cool. We got that sorted out. We're good now. You know what? I need some way to like make sure this food gets preserved because it's going to go bad or something. You know, it's like, and then I've got like all this time sitting around. So maybe I should tax each other <laughs> for like for this food. Or now we have to figure out, oh, we have this farm. So we're going to have to defend ourselves from other people who want to come and take our food from us. So let's build a wall around this farm and like, let's build weapons and stand there on that wall. And when they come, we'll, we'll kill them. You know, like all of this, there's always, it's how life works is like, there's always going to be something to do. And we, that same impulse of like moving from hunter gatherer to agrarian to the through the stone age into like making more and more advanced weapons and technologies to the point we're at now where you and I, I'm very grateful to software that's allowing us to have this conversation. (laughs) We're getting to talk, you know, I just flew halfway around the world and then we're talking through this technology. All of that is outgrowth of that same human impulse to innovate and to generate changes in our external environment. And it's great in certain ways and none of it at any point has resolved or bringing us to bring us to the fundamental thing of how are we how is our awareness in the present moment which was this exact same 
that's available to us now, you and I on this call, as these hunter-gatherers wandering through the forests and plains. That never changed. It was the same. It is the same. And that experience is one of being in tune, you know, and this is that resonance concept. It's like, it's this experience of being in, being in a deep listening space in a connected experience. You know, you mentioned rather than being in this disconnected space where, where we're focusing on productivity and optimization, it's like yeah. all of that has its place, but ultimately what really matters is that experience of connection and love and the feelings that kind of come out from that experience. And anyone, most anyone will finally, they, they won't admit it to you over drinks or at dinner, but finally, eventually it reveals itself to all of us, right? What do you, you really care about? What really matters ultimately when you're asking like, have you led a meaningful life? Do you feel happy? You know, if you're sitting on your deathbed, do you feel satisfied? What people usually talk about is the connections they formed, is the quality of the life they lived, not just in, and, and not really mainly in all those external circumstances. It's like someone there to love, starting with ourselves. Someone, did I, was I able to create that presence to, in, to really enjoy that and savor that? with myself, with other people, with the people most important in my life, with nature, the experience of life, or was I just too damn busy? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think two, two roads are opening up for me here, right? One is, I think one will go down, which is, okay, we've talked about you, what you just illustrated is the role of that internal shift in leading a like rich presence driven like life 100 percent want to go down that understand what that shift is like how do we get there blah 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 but then i also want to actually try to tune in what is being evoked for me as we're talking about this at that more you know theoretical level and it's these two competing feelings right this tension that is basically the foundation of what we're talking about here one is like a of course, this is what I need to do. And I've been there, right? I've felt it. And like you said, it doesn't have to be that we have these hard practices, carving out time for meditation, carving out time for this or that, even though those help, right? Those help quite a bit to, to building mm -hmm. that muscle. I remember that conversation with Pesach, the hard practices that build the muscle and then the fluid liquid practices of just bringing that muscle into practice into any given moment, operating from that place. And so I think there's that side of me that's just like, yes, 100%. I've been there. I know what it feels like. It feels good. It feels rich. I'm connected with that idea of that being the way, you know, the way to, to lead a meaningful life. You know, like you said, it's the only thing, right, that matters or the, the biggest thing. And then there's the other part of me that is still feeling that resistance, right? It's still feeling that, yeah, okay, sounds good, but, right? <laughs> and, and, and that part of me is going to the list. It's going to the calendar. It's going to, okay, we're having this conversation now. You know, I have a meeting in an hour, 15 minutes. I still need to think about some stuff for that meeting. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have the meeting, then going to do a little bit more work. Then, okay, I'm driving to Tahoe, you know, later today. And what do I have to do to get ready for that? You know, and kind of like, okay, I need to do all that. But okay, I still want to get this other stuff done. And that part <laughs> is is still there, you know. And, and And as we've said, like that part plays its role, but that part is not just playing its role. That part is still like, yelling you know it's still yelling within me like pay attention to me right make sure don't don't just cast me aside for these woo woo concepts of being present and blah 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 you know there there's a judgment that's coming from that side still i think the question that that side is asking is like prove to me that this other thing this this idea of being present is also going to keep me in mind right it's still going to help me do the things that I want to do, right? And again, intellectually, I, I know, and even experientially, I've been there where I'm like, they're actually very complimentary, right? If we can be present, we can be in tune, we can just be with what we're doing. 
and, and compliment and you know have that tie back to yes, sometimes we have to step back, plan, put things in sequence, prioritize, whatever like that. Those are not contradictory, right? But that side of me right now in this moment is saying, I don't have time for you still. Like, yeah, you've told me this is the the path to Eden, <laughs> you know, or the stairway <laughs> to heaven, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe later. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I so just want to name that. <laughs> beautiful. I'm so glad you did. So if you're willing, let's be present with that part. And yes. practice, you know, in process work, we talk about this idea of amplification and mm-hmm. a primary and secondary process that you just named. You know, your primary process, well, it's like a little bit up in the air. It's it's being contested. Which one is your primary <laughs> process? You know, it's like, but uh, on one side, uh, you've got that impulse of like, okay, following along. And then the secondary other voice. And so what I'd like to invite you to do, Rahul, is let's be present to what's going on there and to that voice. And as you were speaking, I think you started to name a couple things. Like you, you mentioned that that voice is yelling. That was one thing you named. You also n- mentioned that that voice maybe is scared about being forgotten or being cast aside and is seems like kind of like constructing things in a little bit of an either or is expressing judgment that this woo woo stuff. So it's kind of l- creating a label. And then there is this prove to me which is the language of that world, right? So play this, play this game on my terms and prove to me what's going on. But those are some things I notice. I'm curious if you just allow yourself to be present and curious here around this voice, what do you notice? What else do you notice about anything related to your experience? What do you notice in your body? What do you notice about how the experience makes you feel? Yeah, I'm closing my eyes and kind of just tuning in there. As is often the case, I think, when I connect with my stress and and this, you know, this drive and this pressure feeling, right? I my attention goes to my shoulders, which tend to hold a lot of tension, you know, because there's that, again, that pressure, right? And it feels like it's being shouldered uh, there, like it's it's resting on my shoulders and there's this like drive or this feeling of like, man, got to gotta do it, got to do it, you know, got to tension my way through it. And so that's one thing I'm observing. There is also what I'm visualizing, like my mind, I, I think I alluded to this already, but my mind is still picturing a calendar and and it's, you know, it's viewing things from that construct. Like I'm feeling that construct of, okay, yes, like me or I, the, like the, the optimization mindset will honor you, the presence mindset. And again, so there's still that dichotomy, that false dichotomy from this construct but I'll honor you by finding time for you. I'm going to find an open space. And I'm like, just even saying that out loud, I'm like, that's, it's, it's just like funny. <laughs> and okay. So, so yeah. that's, this is great. So keep going. And yeah. um, let's be, so when we're playing with this kind of approach, you know, you've, so you can jump into these different sides, right? So we can identify yeah. as the calendar side which you just gave voice to that. And then there was this kind of meta Rahul moment here where we said, oh, that's so funny, right? So, which is actually yeah. subtly, like we're now we're expressing a judgment again against that calendar yeah. side. Like we're, yeah. so, so, so we've heard the calendar side and it's made an offer, which is very nice. It's going to make some space. <laughs> it's going to make some space in the calendar for this stuff, which is important. It's really important. I mean, like that's like a big victory with a lot of my clients, you know, like, oh, okay, good, good, good. So let's switch sides for a minute. Okay. So, so we've played with being on that side of the, of the, the calendar, the optimizer. Let's go over to the other side. Let's see if we can actually be with that component of your experience of the the resonant yeah. side. And I'm curious if we go to that side and notice what comes up in this 
experience, this, this inner dialogue that's happening, what do you notice from there? Yeah, what I'm, you know, I just smiled, right? And what I was feeling was actually just the joy of being in this right now, you know, in this conversation and this <laughs> reflection and this experience. And then I started projecting, you know, this resonant side started projecting that feeling into the calendar <laughs> and mm. like kind of imagining it forward to like, okay, let's, let me just confine it to today, right? Like what does the rest of my day even look like? And I started imagining mm. different things and two, two images or two feelings sort of emerged. One was this feeling of like swimming, like swimming through the day at like a leisurely pace and just enjoying. I really like like being in the water. So I think the like mm. coolness of like being in the water and gently kind of gliding through it. Right. And, and it, it's just this like pleasurable feeling, you know, I think that that's like one feeling that I was feeling, which again, I know it's very abstract or uh, kind of, uh, you know, just watch your just, judgments, watch your yeah, judgments. True, true. Just, just... Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one, <laughs> the other feeling was like imagining some of the specific things I'll be doing later today. You know, I have a meeting with uh, my team about this project and I was like, I was like, Oh man, like there there's this experience of that meeting that I now feel more connected to and really hope to have, which is really like positive, which is very like curiosity driven, uh, which is very purpose driven. You know, it's like, hey, like there's a reason we're having that conversation and I want to be fully in it. You know, when I'm in it, I don't want to be thinking about the rest of the day, right? I want to be fully in it. and tune into or like access my creativity, you know, really think about that conversation and the topic that we'll be discussing from a place of just like exploration, like wanting to just see what comes out and, and like allowing my intelligence, allowing my ingenuity, allowing my receptiveness to what, what my teammates will be bringing in, allowing all of those things to shine through. Right. And even as I'm talking about it, I'm smiling because I'm like, oh, that's, if I'm in that place, if I'm coming from that place, that conversation will be fun. You know, it'll be, it'll be a good time. And it's not just this like a uh, meeting I have to do, right. And as part of trying to do everything, you know, trying to, uh, trying to, you know, fit it in. It's like, no, it'll be fun. And it'll be an expression of desire, this longer term, journey, you know, that the thing that I'm trying to build that the control impulse is also supporting, right? But it's it's going to come from a place of uh, all those forces, you know, all those qualities that I was just mentioning. So those are the two feelings that are coming up. I think this coolness, this cool flow, that swimming metaphor, and then the just the like the energy, you know, my fingers are kind of like pulsating right now. This like electric impulse, this current of, of excitement, of enthusiasm, you know, of creativity, mm. of ingenuity. Mm. And I think all of those forces are also present here. So let's just go one step further and let's go further into that feeling of the, the I think these feelings are related. The, the, the swimming, the pleasure, the pleasurable feeling of the water, of being in flow, you know, which is very connected with resonance, same thing almost. And this excitement, this energy, this electricity. Let's set, I have many comments. I have to like manage my own, you know, like commentary, <laughs> control impulse here. Let's set all that aside for a minute because we've got all the time in the world for that. But let's be with that feeling like just a little bit more. And I want to invite you to go just into that feeling give yourself this moment to be present to that and to open just a little bit more to that and notice what arises for you what you experience as you do that
I'm feeling this like expansiveness, this feeling of, uh, I'll just throw out everything that's coming to me right now. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling enthusiastic, feeling open. And the expansiveness, I think, was like projecting this feeling into just the future, you know, and this desire to uh, channel this feeling like purposefully towards all the different things I'm trying to do. So that's where the, the other piece is coming in, but not coming in in a, in a like uh, antagonistic way, right? It's almost like merging where it's like, yeah, like that, those, those ambitions, those desires to like do those things, you know, that the mountain I was alluding to is like feeling like an opportunity right now more than it is yeah. feeling like a, a I don't want to use the word burden, but that's what's coming. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I yeah, think, so, so, yeah. So these parts are in a more, their, their dialogue is shifting, right? Yeah, there, exactly. There's more of a collaborative nature to the interaction, which is great. And I am still hearing, which again is natural, but I'm, I'm hearing that um, optimizer coming, yeah. you know, that, that is thinking about, okay, like, how do I, you know, maybe it's like also as, as you were like, uh, like being in that feeling, I was like, oh, I, like, I wonder if Rahul is thinking about like the silence that's happening on air right now. And like, if it's like <laughs> enough, if it's like, I, how much time, how much time can I really give myself to feel this before I have to say something, you know, to deliver, like, fill this like blank space of someone listening to something. So and I, that, that was just my thought that was happening. Yeah. But, like, but if we just, uh, if we, let, let's just set aside the future for a moment. It's great that, that dialogue. So like there's benefit oh, that's happening there. There's more collaboration possible, I think, between these different parts. And we're seeing that. And let's just, let's set it aside. And one more time, I know I said this one step deeper, but this is the same step. I'm ca- calling that for the same step. So like, <laughs> let's, let's just do it one more time of just like, okay, that the, the feeling you, you mentioned feeling confident, expansive, enthusiastic. And then there's like these associations to that, to how it will be applied, how it will be channeled. You said, you know, how it will be purposeful, but let's like, let's be with the feeling of what's there. And, and yeah, I want to invite you just to, to notice one more time and to take all the time in the world. I'll play like a little song or something, or we'll, we'll, cut the, <laughs> we'll, 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 we never edit these, but you know, we'll, we'll make like a small edit. If you're, if you go into Savasana right now for <laughs> yeah. a couple of lifetimes, but yeah. like, yeah, just, um, I want to invite you just to, to connect with that feeling a little bit more and, um, and see where that feeling takes you not into some future state, but in, in the here and now. It's funny. I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm navigating this feeling of still, yeah, feeling a little bit of what you were talking about. Uh, so it's just like, should I be saying something? Should I not be saying something? What am I feeling? Let me articulate. You know, all of that is happening, and then I, I like stepped out of that for a second. I was like, no, let me just tune into the feeling. Like, actually, bring myself there. And then there is this excitement to just articulate. <laughs> To like do what I'm doing right now, which is just, is like, hey, mm. th- th- don't even evaluate that desire to articulate. Mm. Just do it. Uh, mm. Just say what's here, you know, and and share the experience. It's coming from this desire to like share, uh, to bring you in, to bring in whoever might be tuning into this, right, and to make it a, a connected experience. And there's just like a, uh, yeah, I'm just feeling like happy bringing bringing myself to this place mm. okay, keep going yeah and i feel like i'm 
feeling some more like lightness, feeling my, some familiar feelings of like, like my, my posture is elevating. I feel mm. like I'm kind of more, I almost feel like I'm like about to float. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. Keep going. Just, yeah. just open to this. Just follow it. Yeah, and what I just felt enter was was some of the like, oh no, but I'm on air. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was okay. a, it was a it was a downward downward pressure, and I think still some of that mm -hmm. of like, oh, but I don't, I, I don't have time. I don't have time for this right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's there, right? That's yeah, there. it's there. It's there. But yeah, I think the other thing yeah. I'm feeling is just like a, a joy around articulating all of this. I think it's what I just said in a different way, but it's like, this is feeling like an experience I haven't had in a while. And I think that's mm. like fun, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, this is really nice. <laughs> okay. So keep going. And I want to give you the, um, the gift of not, needing to articulate or share anything yeah. so just now just now i want you to um try to just relax and connect with that floating experience you're describing and try to allow yourself to fall back into the vastness of the universe the, the vast space beyond all this and don't worry at all about anything you have to share about it or present don't worry about anything related to that. And, um, and I won't ask you to describe your experience afterwards. If you, if something comes up it naturally, that's, that's all great, but just for you, you just take this moment to just see and just, you know, you'll be very busy later. So, you know, to really savor this one, <laughs> you know, like just, just take this moment, you know, to just, um, to let yourself fall all the way back, all the way back, all the way into the, um, into the vastness of the universe. Yeah, man, I would love to actually articulate because it these there's just these like beautiful images I feel that just came to me. One was really thinking about, uh, you know, when you use the word like, hey, take this as a gift from me, right? I, I just like felt your love <laughs> and I just imagined us like hugging Right. And that, that exchange of like warmth of care of, uh, just being held and, and holding one another, you know, like it, it I was, I, and even now I'm like feeling it very deeply. And even though we're across the, you know, like you said, across an ocean and on a screen, it's like, I, I'm like feeling it right now, you know, as if we're, we're in that embrace and that's such a beautiful feeling. And I think also when you were, the, the other image that's coming for me is when you're just like, oh, just go all the way back, right? I mentioned I'm going to Lake Tahoe this weekend. And I just like imagine myself 
leaning all the way back. And then mm-hmm. I was like leaning into the water and floating mm-hmm. in the lake. And again, that water, that water feeling, but also just being surrounded by the mountains and really feeling connected to our like natural world, you know, and all the forces that come with that. And then the third image that I just have to name also with that is in that same, I'm floating, I was like picturing myself. And so there's a little bit of ego in this, but then feeling like this ball of energy, like emanating from me, right? And sort of enveloping the like people that I'm going there with, right? So that's Kirti, it's it's a bunch of our friends. And that being this like positive glow, you know, emanating outwards where I'm just a vessel for that. Like it's not even that it's me, it's just that that positive clothes emanating mm-hmm. out from me and kind of uplifting everybody else too, you know, and bringing everyone in and everyone else has their own, everyone also has their own glow, right? So it's just this like constellation of this like eminent energy. And yeah, I know, you know, it's just these cool images and I'm just feeling, I'm like enjoying mm-hmm. describing it, which is why I was like, even though you said, yeah, you don't need to take that. I'm like, I'm going to go there. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so beautiful. I really appreciate you sharing. And um, yeah, that, that's resonance, so to speak, you know, that yeah. there's, uh, there's layers upon layers to that experience, but what you're describing, I can feel that that resonates. I think, you know, folks listening can feel that also all the other voices are probably chirping and doing all the different things, but, yeah. <laughs> but inside, you know, there's that feeling and, and it's, I, I love the image I got of you sharing, you know, your own glow and then these other people and experiences with their own glow and kind of you're showing them like your hands are doing this kind of going up and down, like bobbing in the water, you know, or in, in the universe. And yeah, you know, I, I think one thing I want to say is like that, that sense of like the gift, right. And sure on on one level it's like a gift from me to you right now but actually like that gift is from the universe it's from life itself and it's for all of us so it's not really i'm i'm helping facilitate this for you right now but you're the one doing it and ultimately it's the universe the nature of life that's offering itself up to you that's welcoming you back And that's really important. It's not dependent on me. It's not dependent on some outside facilitator. It's just your um, willingness to fall back. And that, that universe is always there. It's always there with its open arms and its open heart saying, Hey, come to me. Like that hug (laughs) is always there and available. And we just get so confused and distracted and busy and all these things that like lead us away from that. But as you, I think as you expressed and when you imagine like that experience of yourself going to on this trip, for example, to Tahoe, that's going to change the whole trip. Yeah. Like that's, that's what's going to maybe easier to conceptualize that because it's more of a social you know thing versus a work thing. But this is true in any circumstance and work too that's going to change the whole experience of what your experience is to be there, what, how other people are interacting with you and experiencing you and what that makes possible for them versus if you're there holding court and pontificating, you know, about your calendar and and the things to do and, and feeling the stress and feeling like the tension in the shoulders and, and looking at your watch and wondering like, okay, well, like this is nice, but then we're going to have to drive home. That is, it seems subtle, but it's like, it's really the difference between, this will sound traumatic, but like life and death, you know, it's like inside that experience you're describing is real life, is the life that touches other people in their life, in their heart, in their soul, and makes life meaningful, makes it worthwhile, 
makes it beautiful and full of love. And that's why this is so important. That's why this is not secondary <clears throat> to anything or a luxury for anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, this is, you know, who we are. And I, I really appreciated your process too, because I think it's really instructive for people listening to like anyone who's done some mindfulness and meditation knows this too, right? Like you start going inside that voice that the optimizer, the calendar voice, like it, it's not like going to take one answer, you know, like it's like, oh, okay, okay, cool. Like I get it flow. Okay, cool. Great. All right. Now, so that, now what? Okay. 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 Are we done yet? You know, it's like, it's going to keep going and it is part of the operating system. You know, it's the co-pilot it's there along for the journey and it has important part for important part, which we've highlighted today to, to function. So it's not something that's going to go away or be obliterated or disappear. You know, it's more that it's something that's going to be integrated and um, find its place in a resonant whole. Yeah, and than, I really, you know, I like really want to emphasize that point, right? Because I think if like I'm holding that judgment, right, that or this feeling of like, hey, this resonance thing is trying to squash my productivity mind, right? If I'm holding as someone who's in this world who really believes in this stuff, right? I can I can imagine, right, how many people would still look at this as like a adversarial relationship, right? Of like a hey, like, you know, let go of that productivity is like completely. And that's not what we're saying, right? It's really about that integration. It's about bringing in both in a way that's I always think of like dance, right? It's like we're dancing together and in service mm -hmm. to one another and in service to a much bigger whole and to a much bigger purpose, right? And I think yeah. that, poise, that point, like part of my emphasizing this now, you know, earlier in this conversation, right? It's certainly for the listeners, but it's also for myself, right? It's like, it's, it's reminding myself. And I think that's why I was particularly interested in this, uh, exploration today, right? Is like reminding myself that they go hand in hand and, and alongside other forces too. You know, th these are kind of two pieces that we've picked up on and, and just wanted to share a couple more examples. Just as you were talking, I was like thinking about where this is present, has been present for me, just rapid fire, right? One is just yesterday I was on a run I was listening to a podcast. Okay, I'm going to listen to this podcast. I'm going to run. I have to get back. People are coming over. And I had this moment of like, let me just not think about that. Like I'm on my way home already, right? Let me just be in this run. Like I was literally running back home. I was like, I'm actually going to turn off the podcast, not turn on any music and just like run. And in a what might seem a weird way, like access stillness while being on the run, you know? And I was able to do that, right? I was just like running. I was like suddenly noticing like trees. I noticed this like dog on the other side of the street. I noticed some like people like laughing. I noticed this like couple that was like maybe having a tough conversation like on the side of the road, you know? And I, I was just like tuned into all these things. And, and it was like so like fun. It was just like so cool to be like, oh, just observing and also noticing for myself, like suddenly not feeling pressure on like getting home faster, you know, and, and oddly, beautifully. So perhaps I, I felt like I was even running faster, <laughs> you know, even though I wasn't trying to, it was just like, I was just like doing it, you know? And, and, and so that to me was like such a cool example of like this definitively uncomfortable experience of running, right. <laughs> it was, it was, suddenly took this different form and, and it was really, really cool. You know, it, it to me likens back to even that subway example that you were uh, describing earlier. And it was mm -hmm. like, it just happened and it was for 10 minutes, you know, it wasn't even super long, but it happened there. And then the other example, we, we, we've been talking about the social example and I've now had enough times when I, I can literally like picture when you were describing it, the times when I've showed up present and what that feels like for me and what I think that feels like for everybody else and just the 
broader energy in the room. And the times when I have it, you know, when I show up, I'm a little bit more, some percentage of my brain is elsewhere. You know, I'm thinking about X, Y, Z and I'm evaluating, like, should I even be here? Should I be doing something else? And I'm like, frankly, it just kind of sucks. You know, like that's not the experience I want to have to say nothing, even of the experience anybody else is having, you know, of me coming Mm -hmm. in that way. I'm like, it's just not really the way that I'd want to live every moment. And then kind of getting third thing is just getting a little bit more abstract. It's like, this makes me think, right? Like, what is the energy I want to be putting out in the world, right? And I know energy is can be a hot button word. It can be exciting for some people kind of be like, oh, okay, again, you're getting into that judgment of what what is energy really? But it's like, no, like, what am I putting out in the world? And what do I want to be putting out in the world, most more importantly, perhaps? And mm-hmm. I think what I want to be a part of is all these moments I was just describing that you were just describing where it's, it's love, it's joy, it's curiosity, it's creativity. Um, it's still productivity. It's still execution, mm-hmm. all those things, mm-hmm. all, all kind of integrated, all uh, in tandem. Right. And, and yeah. I think, yeah, beautiful, man. You know, I think resonance, like we talked about on the last episode, it's, it's musical, right? So yeah. when we get in, we start getting in touch with the the harmonies of life and the symphony of life, everything changes and we see the same things in a different way. And there is this, when, when we're not there, things seem more adversarial, more dualistic. And as we fall back into this other way of being, then kind of the illusory nature of that dualism starts to present it present itself more clearly and we see everything going hand in hand and, and a lot of the categories and the judgments that we create that we've created in that other way of thinking um, start to melt and fall away and things make sense in a different way yeah. and you know as you summarized it's like that that's that's the big clear takeaway from today, you know, it's like resonance is all about optimization. You know, it's like, it's all about productivity. It's great for those things. And holler at me if, if that's where you want to focus on, but it's, it, but it's, it's all these other things alongside it. And, and beyond that, that make life, make life good, you know, make life worthwhile. And, and if anything, you know, I think that's, uh, what I believe that's where we where we put our focus and if we do that then then life opens up in profound and interesting and unexpected ways I just want to say I'm really grateful for opportunity to speak today and just your willingness to put yourself onto the chopping block you know to to be on the <laughs> canvas and share with us your process because that is so illuminating and so helpful. Like when we talked about transparency on the previous episode, like all of these different ins and outs, like if I'm in my judging voice, you know, I'm sure you're there and you could sit there and be like, well, what's, why are we talking? It's so boring. Like we're going to so many details or like, why is it, you know, like, no, like every little detail, if you've been listening to this show, I'm sure you can relate to it in your own way. I know I can relate to every single contour of what you described Rahul. Cause it's like, this is yeah. like our human experience. This is what's happening inside all our minds. And when we don't take the time to unpack all that, like it just becomes like the the structure by which we end up making a lot of decisions and those decisions and taking actions and those things have effects and they cause ripples and sometimes they cause harm. And having the opportunity to really be present to the layers of your experience, I think is just like so humanizing and it's relatable for the rest of us. So thank you for having the courage and the willingness to take that on. And um, it's been like really, really fun. I've, I've it's been a joyful experience here today. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you, Gabe. Yeah. I think as we just close out here, right. I want to reflect that same point back, like both gratitude to you, to our relationship, that's built over, you know, several, a couple of years now. Right. And just like what that's opened up and enabled as far as having this kind of a dialogue and feeling comfortable doing it on air. And I, you know, I think also like what I'm feeling is this, this burgeoning or this emerging idea that 
this feels like it could be a turning point for like what we're doing with this project. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to overextend on that thought just yet, but I, I feel like we're opening the door to something different, you know, and, and not to judge or say that what we were doing before is any less or worse in any way, but just that this could be a really cool new dimension, you know, of what we're trying to do. And I'm really excited to keep building on that, right. And just seeing where it takes us um, and continuing this experiment with you. And so with that, um, I I guess, Gabe, before I close out, just wanted to see if you had any final thoughts from your end and uh, otherwise, you know, we can start to wrap here. Just, uh, just send me a calendar invite and we'll get to work on, on set, setting that whole thing up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, we'll, we'll set that agenda. Uh, um, but, but actually, so, so just that and then um, that jest aside, what you mentioned about the feeling of a, like an open door. Um, yeah. I think that's the, that's the part that I'd like to just feel and um, connect with. And for folks listening, I hope it's a doorway for you too. And I trust it is, you know, if you've, you've heard this, then we, we're all in this together, you know, in this deeper layer of life that we're exploring, like there's these patterns, you know, and it's like these categories of who we are and what we're listening to or what's internal and external. It all kind of, uh, it gets a little mushy uh, and starts to fade away. <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that open door, uh, I agree. I feel that and uh, I'm excited to walk through it with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Likewise. Likewise. And so just as we wrap here, you know, to the, to, to you, our dear listeners, uh, if you're listening to this, consider this an invitation from us to you as well, you know, to, to give yourself that gift of just tuning into yourself, listening internally and, and just considering this question of what is the construct that I'm I'm operating from right now? You know, what would it look like to open myself up to a different construct, whatever that might be? What can that enable? Um, what would that feel like, right? And and what am I drawn to feeling, right? And maybe tuning into this idea of what what's resonant for me right now. So, just a few few questions to leave you with and. I uh, want to thank you all, as always, for tuning in with us. And, and uh, you know, if you do enjoy listening to us, and in particular, if you enjoyed this episode and uh, think that there is something here of value for you, like, please share it with a friend, you know, share it with a friend and, and encourage or open up a dialogue, right, that might add even more energy to this exploration for yourself. And as always, we also encourage you to join our newsletter, Uh, to follow along the journey or to leave us a comment uh, if this landed with you uh, at live at wovenwings.net. We'd always love to hear from you. And uh, with that, just want to thank you all again for tuning in, uh, for offering your love, your support, your energy to us. And uh, we will talk to you and, and be with you next time. Thank you all again.